Okay, so the problem we're solving is limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cos x over sine x. So the idea of uh, using the basic trig limits that we already know, the definitions that we have, to solve this is a good idea. So we know that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1, and the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cos x over x is 0. So a lot of limit problems basically boil down to coming back to these two basic definitions and using them to solve the problem. So we're always going to come back to these two. So if we can somehow make this look like those, then we can do it. And we can also use some of the rules of limits that we've learned along the way. So one of the rules that we've learned is that the limit of any expression can be equal to the product of the limit of two ex two expressions. If we can, in other words, if we can break this expression up into two things that multiply together that get us back here and take the limit of each piece, then we can multiply the limit of each piece together and that will give us the limit of the whole thing. So I'll explain that better. Um, so let's break this into this quantity, the numerator, um, times um, over 1. We'll do it. So we'll do limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x and we're going to leave the denominator out, so we'll just put this over 1 for now. Actually, I'm going to leave that blank. because. Alright, so that's the first piece. And then I'm going to put something here in a minute. And that's times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over sine x. 1 over sine x. So certainly if you multiply 1 minus cosine x times 1 over sine x, that'll get you right back here. So this is totally legal. Uh, but unfortunately it doesn't really look quite like the definition, so it doesn't make it easy to finish. But what we can do is we can make this one look like this definition if we just divide by x, right? But the problem is what right do we have to just go dividing things by x, right? We, we'd love it to look like that, but what do we have to do in order to make it okay to divide by x over here? Well, we know the whole thing has to multiply back and get us over here, so we need an x in the numerator as well to cancel with that x in the denominator. And we're going to conveniently put it with the sine x. So now this guy looks exactly like the definition, and this one looks kind of like this definition except that it's been inverted. But one thing that we'll notice here is that the definition says the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1. But what does that really mean? That means that as x gets increasingly close to 0, the numerator and the denominator become equal. So regardless of if, of if this is represented as sine x over x or x over sine x, it's going to be 1 because they're going to be the same. So it turns out that this limit is the same as that limit. This equals 1. By the way, that's not true of this definition, right? If you have, It's only true because it's 1. 1 over 1 equals 1 over 1. If it was 0 over anything, and that anything was non-zero, and you inverted it, you'd have infinity, and the limit would not exist. So that's a pretty unique feature of this definition. Anyway, um, this one follows this definition exactly. So this is clearly 0. And that's it. We found the limit of this piece. We found the limit of this piece. They're being multiplied together, which proves that we can get back here anytime we want to. Um, so the limit of each piece can then just be multiplied together at the end. And 0 times 1 equals 0. That's it.